One of the things I've consistently been thinking about in my adulthood, and something I seldom hear people talk about, is just how young our age of digital technology is. And in that, I've done a lot of questioning on just the nature of gaming as essentially a very new technology in human civilization, as well as the human engagement that's had nuanced effects on humanity and where it may be leading us moving forward. So to just get into the hypothetical future that inspired this video, I've genuinely been thinking that one possible outcome of humanity's attachment to video games is that we end up creating a new universe, like an actual, literal universe with real, physical properties for life to interact with. I know that probably sounds like an absolute asinine take, and no, I have not been playing too much Xenoblade, but hear me out on something I feel is very interesting about video games and just the more abstract nature of their integration with reality. See, in essence, you can very much define video games, any video game, as a simulation of reality. A depiction of an environment where you have to contend with some sort of variable, and in that framework, we as human beings have created some vastly expansive environments over the past half century or so. I'd say if gaming as a technology progresses at even a fraction of the rate it has been across the next billion years, let's say, then I can genuinely imagine different phases of humankind where there are game simulations that exist, even if they're primarily for entertainment or artistic purposes, but exist as a realm comparable to an actual dimension that physicists would study. This may sound like a vanilla example, but think about how after only 15 years or so of being a thing, Minecraft is literally a game that can essentially program other games and other interactable systems within itself. You know, like do crazy stuff like redstone and command blocks, etc. Countless people have made things like working computers within Minecraft. And even just recently, while I was writing the script and thinking about this stuff, I saw this story of a guy who apparently built a calculator inside of Pokemon Sapphire, and I watched the video of it from a guy named Adef, sorry if I said that wrong, and it was really cool and interesting, and another example of what I'm mentioning here, like, it's objectively possible to make a simulation inside of a simulation. I think that's my takeaway with this. But even with that in the grand scheme of things, like in terms of actual in-depth code, software, internet connectability, we as humans have barely even begun to build out the various threads of connectivity when you're talking about an interactive world. And what we have already built has had profound effects on who and what we are as people. In the grand scope of time, 50 some odd years of doing this is a piece of lint in the pocket of humanity's timeline. Modern humans are young enough as is when it comes to our modern society in general, but I'd say we're even younger infants when it comes to integrating these virtual realms with different aspects of ourselves. The reason I feel it's important to note that within this larger idea is because we're already in this place of just wanting constant progress and innovation at pretty much every step of the way. You know, the initial tech boom of the past half century has really exploded in such a way where we now want that progress to just infinitely continue. Generally speaking, we've come to like really just unknowingly value expediency when it comes to technological advancement and in turn game development. Simply put, a lot of us act like if a game is not revolutionizing culture or you know setting a whole new industry standard, then it's subpar or mid as a lot of people like to say, uh, and I've kind of been guilty of that as well. And while I think that mindset is you know, worth a discussion in and of itself, for better or worse, humanity is in this place where there's like zero indication that we're gonna stop iterating on all of these virtual worlds in the next hundred years or so, and then probably the next thousand and so on and so forth as you could imagine. Like, does anyone watching this video really think that in the next century or so, Nintendo, Xbox, Sony, they're gonna come out at some point and, and just be like, all right guys, I, I think that's enough. Uh, we have sold enough consoles, we've, we've made enough games, I think we're good. I, I think 
society. We, we don't need to, we don't need anymore. We're good. Yeah, no, th that's not happening. <laughs> as far as we can tell, the proliferation of gaming as both a technology and human engagement is indefinite across future generations given its inception as what I would say is a legitimate turning point for humanity, you know, for human civilization. And in this new reality, there's all sorts of new trends and industry practices we can agree will inevitably come about as the years go by, and it's precisely because that's the case, I think an extremely long-term path toward making a profound dimension akin to a universe through whatever new technology emerges is worth considering, even if that possibility has about as much relevancy to our current lives as the sun inevitably dying. I think that's a good analogy, because if building a universe is possible in any form, the number of years that would have to go by to see it manifest is so large that the scale of time means almost nothing to us as we talk about it today. But again, even in spite of that, there's a plethora of implications for us to consider as we ponder this. The first one being, why would anyone, individually or collectively, even want to create a universe in the first place. This admittedly opens up the door to a lot of you know philosophical layers to this whole query, but I think one answer that's worth noting and that is pretty interesting is just human beings have a very strange but fascinating relationship with just the essence of creation in general. You know, manifesting that which we envision as people, as you know, as, as sentient beings. And I really think we're seeing that highlighted more than at any other point in human history post-advent of digital technology. And you know, AI is a perfect example of this, with all of the controversy that's surrounding it. Like, we're already seeing this thing where a significant chunk of human beings are very much into the idea of just reverse engineering the human condition into artificial mediums. So I can imagine a world where humans have rationalized just the desire to reverse engineer the known universe on a near complete scale. What's interesting about that thinking is how it originates from this very simple notion tied to the founding gaming principle of today, which is to just have fun. Like it's interesting because you can argue that gaming started with such a simple premise revolving around such simple engagement and interaction leading to people being enamored with whatever retro interface they were in front of. A nice novelty that added some spice to life and challenge since achieving a goal has always been part of games. And yet, across the past half century, I think what people look for in a game, any game regardless of genre, is becoming far more nuanced and genuinely profound in a way that essentially links the real world to the virtual one. Some of us need a game that stimulates our curiosity when it comes to exploration. Or maybe it's a mental challenge of solving a puzzle in a game of some sorts, or just a challenge in general with side-scrollers, or contending with speedrunning, or for some, maybe you like what's dubbed today as cozy games, you know, your Animal Crossing and farming games. The facets of these works that resonate with people have already transformed our desires from some of the more simple-minded sentiments of their beginnings. Not that there's anything wrong with simple sentiments though, but it's the fact that, for many of us, our engagements are still more intimate, more thought-provoking is the phrase that comes to mind when I consider healthy discourse and things of that nature. And you know, it's not just consumers either. I consider game developers to be part of this too. I mean, how many times have you heard stories or interviews of devs having their ambition limited to the technology at their disposal? It's the fact that they're humans with evolving ideas and preferences just like us who are engaging with those works that's important here. Across the board, I can see why humanity would reason with itself for why man-made dimensions are needed as it develops the technology to create them, even if in some regard they're not necessarily built around having a succinct goal per se. You know, if we're talking countless millennia and generations, I don't think it'll be surprising to see human philosophies on the concepts of, you know, fun and play transform into something more, I guess you could say, advanced, arguably, maybe even a bit more in depth compared to what we talk about today, perhaps. Granted, I also wouldn't be surprised if those future philosophies were, you know, a mix of 
narcissistic and artistic ambitions alike. Again, humans like to hold dominion over the essence of creation, even in casual contexts. And it's easy for us to get just, you know, completely enthralled in ego as we do it. Like, would you be surprised at all if a new generation of humans came around and were claiming that they were the ones on the verge of creating a new utopia? Okay, now we're getting into Xenoblade parallels. <laughs> but really though, it's it's more of a form of like ideological escapism that we currently see within our modern media that i think could potentially spread in the future you know you take some of the pitfalls of gaming and there's always another world that's better than your own one all this being said we may as well get into another layer to this worth mentioning which deals with the nature of games being highly highly varied you know, there are so many different kinds of games. I'd go so far as to predict a man-made universe would actually be a multiverse due to how many contrasting depictions of reality we've conjured up so far. I haven't even got to how the laws of physics would work if we're talking about an artificial simulation the size of the known universe, but I'd imagine those founding laws would legitimately be different across whatever layouts this dimension could take. Maybe that sounds like we're getting too fictitious with all this, but honestly, I don't think so. Think about how vastly different a game like Breath of the Wild is from a game like 13 Sentinels, for example. The former is very much associated with exploration and creativity in an open world, along with puzzle solving. And the latter is a visual novel sci-fi exploring narratives that have plot twists inside of their plot twists with a gameplay that's basically a tower defense. These are each completely different worlds that, like I alluded to earlier, satisfy very different tastes in us as people. Media like this inspires us in different ways, inspires us to look at life in different ways we may have never considered. So that branching tree of deep, varied perspectives alone could one day manifest into a network of varied worlds, each with their own unique states of existing in them. I know it sounds silly, but imagine if different worlds saw chemical compositions of matter and material structures manifest unique outward appearances, essentially giving them their own art style, I suppose. Granted, as I think about this, and a question I'm sure some of you watching may have is just where this hypothetical universe would be located in terms of its physical properties. Like, what does a new system of dimension emerge out of, considering the way we operate out of one currently? And truthfully, I don't know. I don't really have a prediction for that, but I do think it's worth remembering that everything in the way of our virtual existence thus far does have a physical component to it. You know, like actual server room locations that manage internet and data for human civilization. And I'd like to imagine that that kind of physical infrastructure may have to be built out to degrees that are unfathomable to us in the present. And even then, one has to wonder if these new dimensions would override our current reality, exist parallel to it, have a backdoor bridging both of some sort. These are all premises we already see in our sci-fi stories today, and while some are plausible, it's a completely different story to just see how they may manifest in real life. No matter what, in some way, shape, or form, our understanding of physics and what's possible to program within a computer and in term game hardware is going to greatly evolve as humanity does as well. That's a journey we'll have to take, which I imagine will spawn some hard conversations and even conflicts among humanity as things progress. Should we perceive ourselves as gods if we created a universe? Is life going to be sentient and autonomous in these realities? And if so, how do we treat and potentially interact with that? Like, these are super loaded questions that would make this video way too long if we're going to try and flesh them out. And to be honest, I for a long time felt that humanity's current understanding of things like omnipotence, free will, identity, consciousness, are wholly underdeveloped. Not in the sense that all our current interpretations are wrong, but more so that the rabbit hole to these layers of existence just go way, way deeper than we've already extrapolated in our current reality. But like I said, this is a potential journey we're on, and we still have a long way to go in our own development, just in general. The kicker with all this I feel is worth closing is that 
what we see created in our lifetimes along this path, you know, the transformative aspect of storytelling, gameplay, crazy aesthetics, there's a genuine sanctity to those things despite being condemned to degenerate behavior a few decades ago. That's a genuine sanctity we as people should respect and be our best selves towards honoring. Like, I know it may sound corny, but I really do believe we should take the lessons, the inspiring themes of our fiction, and apply them to the real world to be better people. Because sometimes, a lot of times actually, we fail to do that, I notice. There have been plenty of us who rave about the beauty of games and what they leave us with, only to act mean, rude, and even elitist in real life toward one another. But it doesn't have to be that way. We can be better. Not even in the uptight, moral grandstanding way, but just in a manner that reminds us to keep ourselves in check. That way, if any of this does come to pass, humanity won't be doomed because of our admitted ego problems. At the end of the day, I know all of this sounds so far out, but I genuinely think prioritizing that and passing it down across generations are lifetimes well spent as we grow and evolve. It means that maybe someday our efforts will lead to something beautiful blossoming across reality. So yeah, at the end of the day, no one knows for certain if that'll be the case, but I sure hope so.